Hi, my name's Andrew Dawson, and I'm Senior Applications Engineer at Dynamic Signals, makers of high-performance gauge instruments for the PC. Today I'm going to show you how to construct a portable, easy-to-use digitizer solution for remote and distributed testing. Imagine that you were charged with setting up a system to monitor multiple high-speed signals. Assume also that that system had to be accessible, controllable, and operable by multiple users. Now you could set up such a system on your own. You could buy multiple gauge boards, install them in PCs at the appropriate locations, connect them to a LAN. You could write the glue software that allowed you to uh, control these multiple systems. But doesn't that sound like a lot of work? We've done this for you in the new gauge FCI X. This is an eight channel gauge FCI X unit. As you can see, FCI stands for Faceless Connected Instrument. By instrument, we mean that the unit is a high-performance standalone oscilloscope. But unlike a conventional oscilloscope, it's faceless. By faceless, we mean that it doesn't have a built-in display, nor does it have any controlling knobs. Instead, the unit is connected with a standard Ethernet cable out the back. The cable is the means by which the unit is controlled and through which data uh, is passed to the host PC that then displays the data. Out the front we have the eight input connectors to the oscilloscope that provides um, eight simultaneous inputs at up to 125 mega samples per second, 14 bits of vertical resolution, and a full giga sample of internal acquisition memory. This diagram shows the power of the FCIX's network connectivity. We have, first of all, a LAN network, a local area network running throughout the facility, and on the top right we see a gauge FCIX connected to the LAN. Next we have two users connected directly to the LAN, presumably from their offices. On the lower right we have a user remotely connected to the LAN, presumably from home, and then on the left we have a user connected through a wireless router to the LAN uh, from his smartphone. All of these users can control the FCIX and monitor data coming from it. In order to demonstrate the power of the FCIX, we've set up this simple ultrasonic demo. So what we have here is a standard fish aquarium equipped with a 5 megahertz ultrasonic transducer positioned at the bottom of the aquarium. The transducer is excited by an ultrasonic pulsar receiver which creates the high voltage necessary for the transducer and outputs a simple plus or minus one volt signal suitable for the FCIX. So at a rate of several uh, thousand times per second, an ultrasonic pulse is emitted by the transducer which travels up towards the surface of the water which acts like a mirror and reflects the ultrasound back towards the ultrasonic transducer. So as long as everything's still the way we show it now, uh, we expect to see a nice healthy ultrasonic echo. But as soon as we agitate the surface of the water, perhaps by this little toy submarine, we would expect the ripples on the surface to um, displace the echo such that it doesn't go back into the transducer. And we'll expect to see the echo uh, of lower amplitude and perhaps shifted in time a bit. We'll see this now on gauge scope when looking at the data coming from the FCIX. This is the host laptop computer from which I'm controlling the FCIX unit through this Ethernet cable. Now the actual uh, FCIX unit is only a few feet away, but I could equally well be several offices away, or if I was using a remote desktop connection, I could be several time zones away. I'm controlling the FCIX unit from GauGeScope, which is Gage's very powerful oscilloscope software, but I could equally well be controlling it from a software development kit program written in C, LabVIEW, MATLAB, or a host of other programming languages. Here we see GauGeScope capturing four signals from the FCIX. As you can see, uh, channels two through four uh, are capturing simple sine and square waves, 
What we're interested for in the ultrasonic signal on channel one. So I'll zoom in on that. Now, if you recall, this echo is created, is, is received by the transducer after the sound bounces off uh, the ultrasonic mirror formed by the surface of the water. And because the aquarium is currently still, this echo is very stable in position and amplitude. But there, do you see that? The submarine just moved and that caused ripples on the surface of the water, destroying the perfection, the idealness of the ultrasonic mirror. So the echo moves all around in position and amplitude. As time goes on, however, the tank eventually settles back and the surface becomes still. And the echo indeed returns to its former stable position and amplitude. I'd like to show you one more thing. From any web-enabled device, such as my wireless tablet or a smartphone, I can actually control and get data from an FCIX. All I have to do is enter the web address into the browser, and as you can see, the live ultrasonic echo that we were looking at before comes up on the screen. For more information on Gage FCIXs or any other Gage product, please visit our website at gauge-applied.com.